Want to get more sales without being salesy? Well, you've come to the right place. Check this out. This is the Sales Gorilla Podcast. All right. Welcome back to the Sales Gorilla Podcast with your host, the sexiest gorilla in the jungle, Landon Porter. Landon, how are you doing today, man? I'm much better now. How are you? I am just sitting over here adoring you on my end of the sky or on my end of the zoom recording. And uh, last week we talked about what I consider to be the linchpin of what I've learned from you. What the thing that makes everything else work, which is really knowing who your ICA is, who your ideal client avatar is. Um, You went, you went very deep. (laughs) Uh, on explaining what that is. And now that the listener, if the listener hasn't listened to the last episode, they definitely need to go back and listen to it. But now that they have, now that you listening in the audience right now understand what an ICA is and why it's so important, I kind of wanted to go into how do you, how do you find them now that you've just, now that you've detailed what it is that you're searching for, how do you go about finding and discovering those perfect for you. Mm-hmm. Yep. Essentially how to get them. Um, well, first, if you've been able to begin defining your ideal client avatar, you obviously have some idea of what you do and who you do it for. If you're brand new to the thing that you do, it's just going to take some time and experience and and some conversations. If you know quite well what it is that you do and you've taken the time to consciously decide what segment of the marketplace you want to do that in and you've gone through the process to begin narrowing down who they are, right? Your ideal client avatar, what they look like, their age range, you know, their, their culture, what they do in the real world, what their life is like. You've gone through that process. It's pretty easy to spot them in the wild, meaning social media. They're probably all on Facebook, but they're not all on Facebook to buy your shit. Some of them might be on LinkedIn and on LinkedIn, they're not all there to socialize with you like we do on Facebook. Well, you might have taken the time to build an email list or you might have a list of people that you can call. Guess what? Each of those platforms, people operate on slightly differently. But if you know who it is that you're looking for, all you got to do is go look, right? You go look on Facebook, right? There's keywords around the thing that you do. Go search it, right? Are they on Facebook? Are there groups around that? Are those groups active? Are they total spam fest? Or the people that could be your ideal client avatar actively in Facebook groups? And here's the key, trying to get help around the thing that you do. Cool. Are there people on LinkedIn that could be your client? Are they actively on LinkedIn connecting with people who could help them? This is often referred to as low-hanging fruit, right? If you can find people actively seeking out help with the thing that you do on a social media platform, they are there. Well guess what? Now it's your turn to people with them, right? Finding them is not that hard. They're on Instagram, but what do we do on Instagram? Well, unless you sell cool things that you can take pictures of, they're probably not buyers. They might be, but they're probably not. If you sell something that's super high ticket, are they on Facebook? Yeah, totally. Are they there to probably buy your thing that's super high ticket on Facebook? Probably not, right? Are they, are they looking for a $49 a month solution for this big giant problem? You're probably not going to find them on LinkedIn. You need to have a little bit of common sense as to who it is that you're looking for, right? What level of, of people are they? That's going to give you a hint as to where they're at and what they're doing on those platforms. But you got to go look. So I want to go back to something that you mentioned at the very beginning, which was the conversations piece. Mm, mm. Um, Having conversations both to define who your ICA is and to really get a good idea of whether or not you're in the right place, whether you're in the right Facebook group or not, whether you're in the right 
social media platform or not. Um, those initial conversations and refining conversations, what should they look like and what should people be trying to pull out of those conversations? Well, first, there's this little ingredient that is called social acuity. And if you go back, it's episode six of the podcast. Um, you need to have a little bit of social acuity. And I'll, I'll give you the, the short and dirty of it now. You need to first observe them and not do or say anything. You're observing them to see if they give you any hints that ah, it looked like it, but these aren't the right people. If you observe for, you know, I don't know, let's call it a couple of hours over the course of a week or two, it's pretty easy to tell that uh, these are the right people at least to take the next step. And the next step is to engage with them a little bit, right? This is the social currency thing that we teach. How do you begin becoming present in somebody's world without it feeling like there's a fucking pitch coming, right? And how do they respond to that, right? And then the next stage to that is actually getting into those conversations. And if you are good at what you do and you observe people and then you begin engaging with them and just follow the conversations they're all already having in these Facebook groups or on people's posts or wherever, it's pretty easy to see where the conversation's going and it's like a stream. It's like a, it's like a little river. All you got to do is stick your feet in a little bit. Well, what you're doing by sticking your feet in that river a little bit is, is you're beginning to engage and have conversations with them. It's natural. If it feels like you're trying to get somebody into a conversation, you're doing it wrong. This is all natural going with the flow around the conversation of the thing that you do. And how would you want to people with somebody who's naturally having a conversation about the thing that you do? Well, of course, you're going to jump right in there with a baseball bat and start swinging, trying to get them to buy your shit. Wrong, right? How would you naturally people with somebody in line at the grocery store or at Starbucks or at a friend's barbecue? Naturally. Let the conversation go where it's going. That sounds like it's going to take way too long, and I don't have that kind of time. What would you say to that objection? Leads Lab, bitches. There's a process for that. There is, and that's actually what I love about Leads Lab. Is <laughs> it teaches you how to direct the conversation or how to direct the relationship to where you want it to go. It, this is not a pitch for Leads Lab. Well, actually, kind of Hell yeah, it's a pitch for Leads Lab. <laughs> but <laughs> but um, I guess... My question is, now that, now that you're looking, now that you know what you're looking for, now you know you've defined where you're going to look for it, what are some things that you kind of mentioned, observe, follow the conversation, maybe initiate the conversation, what are some things that people should keep in mind or maybe look out for, warning signs that this is not the person to engage with or uh, indicators that this is the person to get engaged with because I'm going to be completely honest. Um, I have been implementing what I've been learning in leads lab and I've been getting clients, but I've also been implementing, I'm working with you on a higher level um, program that you have. And I've been trying to go after uh, people that could be strategic partners and I've not been having the same results. And um I think it's because I, I'm not exactly sure what it is, but I do know that sometimes I think this is the perfect person that I should start a conversation with. Everything on Facebook looks like they're the per perfect person. Everything on LinkedIn looks like they're the perfect person. And then I get seven or eight messages in, or I get on an actual phone call with them and I realize, Oh wow, I've just wasted six weeks chasing this person who I don't want to work with. Yep. Strategic partnerships is a completely different level. It is a much higher level and a much longer process, but the mechanics of it are the same. Your, your initial concern that you raised was it sounds like this is going to take a shit ton of time. What's really interesting is we all do this naturally and normally in our life to one level of success or another. Meaning if you, if you're standing in line at Starbucks and for whatever reason, you connect with somebody else that's standing in line and you have a short two or three minute conversation. 99.8% of us 
humans are just going to go our own ways and we're probably never going to connect with that person again unless we run into them at Starbucks. If we happen to do that, that's by happenstance. Well, how can we make sure that that happens and it's not just random and at happenstance? By having an actual process. So you connect with that person and instead of going your separate ways, there's a way to actually connect with that person and it doesn't have to be weird and it doesn't have whatever, but that's creating presence. There's three steps to this. We need to create presence so we can establish awareness and we can eventually build authority with these people. There's a process to it. And by and large, it takes between five and 10 days to do this with a grouping of people. Let's call it a couple of dozen people to where if you do this and go through this process, it is on point. It's on target. It filters the wrong people out, filters the right people in, and you're not doing anything differently than you normally do on Facebook or LinkedIn. Anyways, you're going to be doing that with your time. So you might as well do it in, in a process. And if you do that, it takes five to 10 days before you start having conversations. And sometimes these people that we're doing this process with, your ICAs will reach out to you day two, day three, day five, right? And they'll be like, hey, uh, that thing that you talked about, I want to talk about it. Hey, can we talk, right? Now, that's the process. We can't cover how to do that and, and all of the details in a podcast episode, but it's simple. What do you do when you first are, you know, connected with somebody? You make eye contact, right? Well, after you make eye contact, maybe there's a little bit more eye contact and eventually you start talking to each other. And if that goes well, eventually somebody says, you know, let's go get coffee or whatever. And it's just a progression of that. We all do that to one extent or another naturally in our natural environment, but you can do that in a very um, intention-based way for a very specific reason and it doesn't take but a couple of days. Now, that's that. You said, okay, so what are some of the things that we're looking out for? Well, this is where we get back to last episode and we're talking about the ICA thing. This is the aspect where I go into, you need to, you need to be clear on your values. I don't like it when people are late. I can't stand people that play the victim card, right? I don't like people that talk shit about other people, right? So, if I'm going to be getting into a conversation with somebody, whether it's public or private, and they start throwing out shit that indicates they're you know, playing the victim card, I'm going away. Good luck. Take care. Bye-bye. Right? They start talking shit about somebody in the marketplace. Good luck. Take care. Bye-bye. Right? Um, if they say, yeah, let's talk uh, at 11.15 tomorrow, Mountain Standard Time. And for whatever reason, I agree to that. And then they know show me. Guess what? They're probably not getting a second chance. So the things that we're looking out for is, is you need to be looking at this from the standpoint of if somebody became your client, would you want to become really good friends with them? A lot of people in my world get this like weird mixed signal here. I'm not saying that you need to turn all of your clients into excellent, really close BFFs. But what we're looking for is could it go that direction if you can say, yeah, I could totally see myself boating with, with these guys, you know, going to Lake Havasu and, and doing like, if you can see yourself doing that kind of shit together, like it would not be weird. What you're actually recognizing is you're actually recognizing how we're aligned at deeper levels, right? This is the bonding thing. We're not looking to turn all these people into best friends. I don't want you to have your clients come stay over at your house and you certainly shouldn't fuck your flock. But if you can identify aspects in other people that you go, man, that guy's really, really cool. Then guess what? They fit that value thing that you've got. And what we're looking for is anything that gives us, oh, that was fucking weird or that was gross or whatever. We're looking for those kinds of red flags in our initial interactions with people. And if you see those, pay attention and be wary. This is where I get to say, you get to tell other people if they can have your thing or not. Not we're going for the yes or no, because that's not how sales is actually done. Okay. So that really cleared up a lot. I think my main takeaway from that is if you don't have a very clear definition on what you want, things that you don't want aren't going to stand out to you as, as well. So just having the 
we kind of talked about it last week, just having the 35 to 45 year old single mother who's got diabetes and cooks for herself. That doesn't give you a very clear indication of what are some red flags that I, that I don't want. And then my last thing is my last question for this is um, why is it that so many people see the box full of red flags it's labeled, this is a box full of red flags, and they still take that person on as a client anyways. Needy. You don't, you don't have enough um, self-worth and self-esteem. And if you're actually good at what you do, you need to look yourself in the mirror and, and ask yourself some, some questions. We all deal with mind trash to an extent, and it's just part of the growing process. Water seeks its own level, and you will you will gravitate towards people that feel the same way about themselves and the same way about you as you feel about yourself. And, you know, look, we all have different opinions and I believe that everybody's entitled to their own opinion. I don't want to deal with people who have the opposite opinions that I do, especially when it comes to business and making money together. I don't want to deal with people that think that scraping emails and sending 10,000 spam emails a day is the way to get clients. Like that's just not for me. And if you would actually just define who it is that you want to work with and then really just be yourself, be your naked weird ass self. Like don't go be naked on social media that might get you in trouble, but you know what I mean? Like take the fucking mask off and just show the world who you are. And if you'll do that, you will naturally push away the wrong people and the right people will be like, Hey, that's like that. I dig that. And that's what we're looking for. Stop being needy. Nice. Okay. Definitely. It's, it's difficult to use Facebook to get clients. If you keep landing yourself in Facebook jail, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or creating a bunch of, you know, extra accounts and fake accounts and, and doing stupid shit. Like it, put yourself in the shoes of, of the person that you're connecting and engaging with. If you were on the receiving end of the shit that you're doing, would you totally dig that? Cool. Well, there are people that also totally dig the way that you're trying to do it. And if you're looking for a different way to do it, we teach that. This is the first stage in getting clients, the ability to go get clients, to go identify who you should connect with, how to go connect with them, how to initiate a conversation with them, and how to turn them into a client. We call it Leads Lab. You can check that out at 30daylead'slab.com. Nice. Okay. I'm a huge fan of Leads Lab. I've been going through it. I've been seeing results and a lot faster than I thought I was going to end up seeing results. So I... I 100% I'm, I endorse Leeds Lab and um, I'm not getting paid to say that. But I kind of am getting paid to say that. So. <laughs> I guess you're going to have to discern whether I'm being honest with you or not. Anyways, Landon, another fantastic episode. I really appreciate your time. Again, I appreciate you kind of doing a deep dive on the fundamentals. I know that a lot of times you're 15,000 feet above where the rest of us are and I appreciate you coming down to where most of us in the audience are at and, and, uh, and, and the approaching it from our point of view. I really appreciate that. And if listeners want to check out more of the podcast, where can they go to do that? Sales gorilla podcast.com. There's a, there's a bunch of episodes out now and most of these are really fucking good. Thanks to you. Yeah. Thanks to you. All right, Landon, fantastic time until next time, man. I will catch you later. Peace out, Cub Scouts. Don't forget, I like fast women, fast cars, and fast processes to make money, and you should too.